God. By the time I got to Alcoholics Anonymous, I need to let you know that because of that thought I had about God being the Santa Claus kind of God, the guy who was going to be making a list and checking it twice and seeing who's naughty and who's nice, and I have been real naughty over the years. And I thought this God did not want to have anything to do with me. So when you guys told me God was the solution, I just thought, I've tried that. Even when I tried to get sober, I had gone back to church, got rebaptized, rededicated myself to Christ, did the altar calls, and got loaded with drink. I heard Doug talk about that chapter that I love so much, the chapter called We Agnostics, chapter four. That's what they told me they had a chapter for me when I got here. They said, Ronald, let's go through chapter four together. And they said that maybe you've always had this viewpoint of a God through somebody else's eyes. Maybe you need your own relationship with this power. And maybe you need to start from the ground up. There's a line in that chapter that I love so much and it says this. Deep inside every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. That he has sometimes been obscured by calamity, by pomp by worship of other things. But it tells me that if I am willing to search fearlessly within myself, we believe in the final analysis, it is only there that he can be found and I got hope. Because nobody had ever told me to search for the power of God inside of me. I've always searched for God in the sky, in a preacher, in my mother, and somebody else who's always seemed so much more godly so much more spiritual than me. And I never thought that I could search for the power of God inside of me. And you guys told me, we've got some steps that are designed to uncover, discover, and discard the garbage that you've piled on top of the power that you already have inside yourself, Ronald. And if you just take these steps in their continuity and in their entirety, we promise you, that when you get to the end, that you will have an experience. And I got hope. After I was in the Harbor Light Center for 130 days, they took me to their second phase recovery, a sober living called Harmony Hall. Harmony Hall is a place they start to transition the men back into real life. If you've been anything like me, when I was drinking, I had become an animal. I didn't have a driver's license, a social security card. I, didn't, I only had the clothes on my back. I had nothing. Forgot to share with you guys when I got sober, I thought I could never be a lawyer again because I had been suspended for non-payment. Well, I, I need to let you know, I thought I'd been disbarred because I had been practicing law without a license. Every time I got my bar dues, I would drink up the money. And after all, I know I'm a lawyer. Why do I need to pay dues? <laughs> so I practiced law illegally for five years while I was out there. And when I got sober, I thought for sure that I'd been disbarred and I'd lost this dream that I'd had when I was growing up. So I was simply going to be satisfied with whatever they could do for me when I was at this sober living. They would find guys part-time jobs and get you a clothing voucher, got you your social security card, your driver's license. And I got these things, and the first job they got me was being a bookkeeper for a little old lady who had a nursing home. Now, I need to let you know exactly what I did, because that sounds fancy, right, a bookkeeper. I would catch the bus to this lady's house, and she would sit me in her living room and she got a stack of her bills and she would hand them to me. And she took her checkbook and she signed a bunch of blank checks and she handed me the checkbook. And she said, Mr. White, I want you to pay all my bills for me and I want you to balance my checkbook and I'll be back in a couple of hours. And she left me alone in her house with a bunch of blank sign checks and I'm five months sober and I'm scared when she came back home two hours later I handed her all of her bills and they were sealed up with checks inside and I gave her her checkbook back and it was balanced and there were no checks missing
and there was nothing missing in her house. And that lady paid me $40 a week to do that job. And she gave me that $40, and I put it in my pocket and caught the bus back to Harmony Hall. I felt 10 feet tall. Because you see, it had been a long time since anybody had trusted me. And I had not burned them. And I knew there was something about that spirit that had gotten so sick when I started drinking was changing. And I grew closer to the power. When I was 10 months sober, they told me I had to leave the sober living because they needed to make room for another guy to come over from Harbor Light. And I'm hiding out in the sober living because I'm scared of moving back to my mother's house because that's where I drank. And I knew that I had relapsed twice before going back to my mother's house. And I did not want to do that again. And there was a lady bringing in panels of Alcoholics Anonymous into the sober living. I will never forget her. Her name was Yvonne. And Yvonne came up to me at the end of the meeting after I shared and she says, Ronald, if you want to, you can move into my apartment with me and my roommate Jenny. And you can sleep on our couch until you get a home group and you feel comfortable enough to move back to your mother's house. And this lady didn't know me from anywhere other than a meeting and a sober living. And she invited me to move into her house. Now I thought at the time, she really just wanted me. <laughs> After all, I know I'm such a catch. I'm 10 months sober. I'm, you know, I don't have a job yet. I just, just you know, but you know our heads work. But sometimes in spite of our best thinking, I moved into that lady's apartment. She gave me a key. And I never disrespected her. I never made any moves on her. And she let me stay there until I got a home group. And she taught me the meaning of trust and unconditional love. And I grew closer to the power. When I was a year and a half sober in Alcoholics Anonymous, going to lots of meetings, sharing from podiums just like this, the program works, keep coming back. And somebody walked up to me at the end of the meeting, they says, Ronald, you talking about how you trust in God, why don't you call the state bar and find out what's happening with your bar car? Living in fear in the rooms of Alcoholics Anonymous. So afraid of rejection. I told you how I fear rejection so much, I won't even ask the question because I think the answer is going to be no. So instead, I just disbar myself. I called up the State Bar of California. They told me, Mr. White, you haven't been disbarred. You've been suspended for non-payment of dues, $2,500. If you pay all your back dues, we'll give you your bar card back. Well, shoot, $2,500 sounded like $25,000 at the time. I had a minimum wage job as a legal proofreader for a law firm. And I'm thinking, but you know something? It's amazing how much money you could save when you're not drinking. <laughs> Incredible. I saved half of every paycheck for the next six months. And I wrote a check for $2,500 to the State Bar of California and they gave me my bar card back. Three months later, somebody in the fellowship, I hate y'all. <laughs> Ronald, isn't it time for you to start applying for a job as a lawyer? Still living in fear. Afraid of sending out that resume. You know how when we get sober, you have those gaps. <laughs> and I'm wondering, uh, how can I put down Harbor Light?